you got the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Lowdown Show, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT, and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You can follow the podcast on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP, all one word, um... If you're into that sort of Instagram thing, you can listen to us on the go on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a glorious app that is available for all Apple and Android devices, and it's free to download and free to make a profile. Go make one of those. Join us live in the chat, and you can chat with us live on the air with that app as well. We are also available in any video versions of the podcast, unboxings, and 2K content. All that stuff is available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Uh, we got a big announcement with our YouTube channel today, so stay tuned for that. And um, You can go subscribe to that, hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I am not joined by Corporate Cappy, as if you have seen on Twitter. We are having some major, major, major Skype issues. Um, I don't know what was going on. Uh, apparently being told that we have to download an older version of the Skype. I'm not sure why. We shouldn't have to really do that. Just all of a sudden now, like we haven't updated our Skype. I don't know how long, but now we just suddenly can't connect to each other. And... It was it was just dumb. Like we we tried it yesterday and it wasn't working. I don't know what's going on. But uh I'm gonna have to do the show solo, but Corporate Cappy will be in the live chat to chat with you guys if you are listening on. And if you guys don't have a speaker, speaker I'm telling you again is a glorious podcast app. It's available for all Android and Apple devices. You download the free app, you make the free profile, you can name it whatever you want. I don't even care what you name it, and then you can go onto the speaker and find us and you can chat with us live right on the air. Um so yeah, uh, there's that. Um, like I said before in the intro, big thing coming to the YouTube channel. Um, I am developing an, a pretty nice uh, television or not television 2K series show that um, I'm thinking. I'm trying to find a day where I'll be doing these uh, live commentaries, and it's awesome. It's called Dare to Be Main Event. Basically, it's going to be a revamped version of the main event show. It's not going to be the same format. Basically, how this format is going to go down is uh, it's going to be a three match show. And it'll all be main event caliber matches. And I'm going to do my commentary since you guys love my Twitch streams and my commentary on those. I'm going to take this up a level and I'm going to do these own shows called main event. Um, so that is going to be actually done on YouTube live. So I'm going to record the matches and I'm going to commentate them live on YouTube. And we're going to do some YouTube stuff with that and make it YouTube live uh it just just on YouTube live is what I'm trying to say. Um, but that's coming to the channel, so stay tuned for that. That's in the works. Um, so before we get into anything, uh, as you guys know, we do have our Twitter Fans of the Month. We're bringing that back for the year of 2018 as we have our Twitter Fan of the Year, who was Glorious Greg, for the year of 2018, or 2017. So for January, our Twitter Fan of the Month goes to, and I sucks, I wish I had the applause effect. I need to get one of those uh, done for this, for this Spreaker app, but... The Twitter fan of the month for the month of January is CupidGirl125. So CupidGirl125, you've won our Twitter fan of the month for the month of January, and you get a shout-out on every single lowdown show for the month of February for being our January Twitter fan of the month. So congratulations to CupidGirl125. Thank you for interacting and being a part of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. So thank you again. Um, Go right into the chat. We have Cubigirl one two five, so our newly Twitter fan of the month, uh, Corporate Cappy. We got in there. He's chatting with you guys as he can't be on the Skype call with me for this podcast. And we have Tiffany from That Ass Podcast. Guys, go check her out. Her podcast. She has an awesome podcast on relationships and anything like that. Um, they haven't been doing live shows recently because of the co-host James, who is awesome, and he has a new promotion at work, so they haven't been able to do the shows regularly. But they will be returning someday, and I wish uh, I wish them all well in their future endeavors. Um, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, crazy week in WWE before we get into the NXT review. A lot, a lot of stuff in the last couple of days uh, that's been, uh, I guess, sprouting up newsworthy. Um, I kind of want to go over a few things. Um, a lot of things, or one thing mainly, is what you guys have been talking about today on Twitter and tagging us like crazy. Um, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to agree. I don't know what's going on, but Shane McMahon has come out today and announced that... Um, Baron Corbin is going to face Dolph Ziggler 
on next week's show. Uh, and the winner of that goes, uh, I guess they say they, it goes on to uh, the Dirty Beat Championship match at Fastlane. It makes it a fatal four-way match. Um, yeah, not sure how I feel about that. I mean, what the fuck was the point of the SmackDown Live Top 10 if you're not going to do anything with it? You have Ty Dillinger, out of all the guys that are on the top 10, you have the one that sticks out is Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger it has nothing to do with anyone else on the, the the SmackDown top 10 list, whatever they want to call it. And I guess it's supposed to mean, like, these are the next people in line that are going to get the opportunities, and these are the top people on SmackDown. Well, if these people are the top guys on top, on SmackDown, the top 10 people, then and you're putting Dillinger at number 10, why is he not in this WWE Championship opportunity match next week? And you're putting Dolph Ziggler, who you clearly don't give a fuck about because he wasn't on the SmackDown after his Rumble return. You've done nothing with him since. And you have Baron Corbin that you have literally done nothing with since last, the beginning of last year. So I, I don't understand what Corbin and Ziggler have to do with the WWE title all of a sudden. Like You're not making sense of this. And like Literally, it just makes Shane look like a crazy idiot. Like, you, you bring out this top 10 thing, you're trying to make it a big deal, yet you have Ty Dillinger at number 10 sitting right there. I don't know why he's not included in this. I don't understand. Why even have this goddamn top 10 if you're not going to give those superstars you put in the top 10 the opportunity? So, to me, it doesn't make sense. I don't know what they're going to make of it. We'll see what happens. I mean, Ziggler versus Corbin, who, who honestly gives a fuck about that match next week? Like, eh, who cares? Literally. Bottom line is, who cares? Um... Thank you, Tiff, for pointing out in the chat. Uh, Jason Jordan had neck surgery. Uh, I guess it was a successful uh, neck fusion, something to do with the the, the, the discs back there. Um, I've read reports saying that he uh, it could be out 10 to 14 months. There's nothing that's come out of these reports after his neck surgery, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that. But um, as of now... Jason Jordan has had successful neck surgery and there's no timeline given. So just the rumored reports of 10 to 14 months. If it's 10 to 14 months, that's crazy. It sucks um, for a guy to be out like a whole year as much as I, you guys know how I feel about Jason Jordan and his promo work and all that stuff and his character. Um, that still sucks to be out for 10 to 14 months, um, basically up till next year's WrestleMania. So We'll see what happens with Jason Jordan. Hopefully, it's not that serious and it doesn't go with the rumored reports. Um, next, I want to talk about is, oh, God damn, Brock Lesnar. Um, my God. Uh, one, they basically just, they should just, before even WrestleMania starts this year, just go out there and give, just hand Roman Reigns the belt. Just put it in his fucking hands. The reports added today saying Brock Lesnar will be going back to the UFC once his contract comes to an end. At WrestleMania 34. Are you fucking kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Seriously. This guy has the balls to come out and say that he's leaving the WWE after WrestleMania 34. As soon as his contract's done. As soon as WrestleMania 34 is done, Brock Lesnar's contract is finished. This guy's got the balls to come out and say that he's going to go to the UFC right after that. And if it's Brock Lesnar versus Roman... How fucking obvious is this of a match now? We knew that it's going to be a crowning of Roman Reigns, but now how more obvious is this? Give me a break. Give me a fucking break. Just go out there and give him the belt already. Just go give it to him. Don't even, before you, just do it this Monday Night Raw. You might as well. You don't even have to have the Elimination Chamber. Just say, okay, by the way, Roman's going to win. You might as well. I don't even know what the fucking point of this Elimination Chamber is. Everyone's in there to lose to Roman. I don't understand the point of this. It's literally the most obvious thing in the whole world. I I, just, I don't get it. Just give the title to Roman. After the Elimination Chamber, come out, Kurt Angle with the Universal title, and Brock Lesnar hand it to him and be like, there you go, man. You're going to get this title anyways. It's not like Brock Lesnar is going to... You cannot sit here and tell me Brock Lesnar is going to go into WrestleMania now with these reports and win the championship. There's no fucking way. Absolutely no way. You might as well put that in the pre-show. Because this is terrible. Absolutely garbage. Who It gives you more of a reason not to give a shit about Brock Lesnar. Plain and simple. Anyways, some more reports. Uh, apparently, and it has to do with NXT, the WWE NXT officials are very high on Bianca Belair and have high hopes for her uh, due to her character and physical ability. Er, 
and expect her and expect her to gain much success in the company. So they are very, very behind Bianca Belair, who looks like the basically the next Sasha Banks, um, just because of her character. So very, very high hopes on uh, Bianca Belair. There's also a report that early creative. Pr- Early creative plans are for Sasha Banks' ability to have a major match at WrestleMania 34. I think a lot of people have seen that uh, basically going to happen with the uh, recent uh, tease they had backstage. Um, so, And it's a match that I don't think a lot of people um, want to see anything should happen and finally come at WrestleMania. I think these girls can have a really good uh, WrestleMania match. Um, as for that, uh, the other big news that we got that uh, I wish I had the applause app again. Because the news we got for 205 Live this week, holy shit, Vince McMahon is no longer controlling 205 Live. He has passed down the reins to Triple H. Thank, there is a God out there. There is a God. My Lord. Triple H is running 205. And you can already see the night and day difference. The last two weeks on 205 Live with the hiring of Rockstar Spud as the GM and the new uh, tournament to determine the new Cruiserweight champion. Almost like Cruiserweight Classic style. It's just such a huge difference. And I think it's going to get more people invested into 205, 205 Live. It looks like they're going to boost up the roster too. It looks like they got Roderick Strong up there. I think eventually Tyler Bates is going to transition over there too. They got Hideo Tommy up there. I think the roster is just going to get bigger and bigger. So I am looking forward to 205 Live in the future now that Triple H is running the show. And we'll see what happens, man. I hope maybe he does uh, maybe convince Vince to move it to Full Sail University where he can have more control. Uh, quote quote, uh, but it needs to be moved to Full Sail University. I always think it should be. Uh, maybe that maybe that's why they're doing all the NXT tapings at Atlanta. Maybe uh, Atlanta is going to be the new home of NXT, and then maybe Full Sail gets two hundred five live. I don't know. It's just an idea, but uh, that's some big news out of this way too. Very very exciting news that Vince McMahon has no longer have a vice grip on uh, two hundred five live. And I also read that um, that it is going to be more in ring work. And it's less uh, focusing on the personalities, which is awesome. I, I love to see that. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, uh, enough of me rambling on here. Let's get into the NXT review and why you're here. We're here to review NXT every single week, guys. The Lowdown Show. Yes, we used to do the Raw and SmackDown review, but for obvious reasons. And for obvious <laughs> reasons because of the creative decisions on the main roster, we do not review those shows anymore. We just stick to NXT, which myself and Corporate Cappy think is the true A brand in the WWE. And I hope you guys out there agree with us too. So we'll get right into the review of it. Um, We'll start off with Undisputed Era and Sanity. That's how they opened the show this week. Uh, Undisputed Era making out, making their entrance out to the ring, looking very, very confident as always. You got Kyle O'Reilly over there playing the guitar with his uh, title belt. Uh, I love these guys. Uh, really, really high on them. Um, love their entrance. I love their entrance theme. I listen to that song almost on a daily basis. I just can't get enough of it. Uh, but they get to the ring and then they get jumped by Sanity from behind while they're all on the ring apron. Uh, a brawl ensues and then uh, out comes security to try to stop them all and really doesn't really work you have these two giant teams in the ring clashing with each other it's like security is basically useless in this case um uh undisputed air make their way up to the uh stage william regal comes out he's pissed off looking very very angry and says enough is enough and books a six-man tag team tornado match for the main event of nxt so that was something interesting. When's the last time we saw a tornado match? And I think I tweeted that, and someone said the last time they could remember was a the Shield versus the the reformed Evolution was the last time we got a uh, tornado tornado tag team match. So that was all right. Um, I, I love the the dynamic of a tornado tag match. We really don't get those a lot. So another thing NXT is bringing uh, alive and bringing back from the dead. That's something that should be used more on a regular basis in the main roster, but they choose not to go towards it. So good for NXT for bringing back this match, and it got you really excited for the main event of NXT. Um, so speaking of tag teams, they moved on here to Heavy Machinery versus Tito Sabatelli. Cobra Cappy's boy and uh, Riddick Moss, who uh, Cobra Cappy is not a fan of, and I don't blame him. The guy is absolutely cringe. The guy literally is the most useless piece of that tag team. Um, this was a pretty back and forth, uh, decent match. They had a tease of Moss and uh, Moss and Tito. Uh, there's a tease of having deception within each other. The way they are tagging each other and looking at each other didn't really look like they're on the same page. Uh, Otis 
Dozovic eventually gets the hot tag, and the team builds momentum. Tito uh, Sabatelli eventually gets the upper hand and tries to cheat with the, the leverage pin with his legs up on the ropes, but the referee catches it this time. If you remember the last time that these two faced each other, Tito got the cheat win with the same leverage pin. Uh, Tucker Knight had a pretty cool outside spot. He did like, like a flip senton from the outside ramp or like on the edge of the ring apron to the outside, which is a pretty cool and a really tough spot to do for a big guy and, and a really hard spot to take from a big guy like that. So uh, Heavy Machinery get back in the ring, hit their finisher for the win. And then after the Moss, or after the match, we had Riddick Moss walk away from Tito, who wanted help up from Riddick Moss. So we got some teasing of a breakup between... Uh, 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 Riddick Moss and um, uh, sorry, Riddick Moss and and uh, Tito Sabatelli. So we got a tease there um, between uh, uh, Riddick Moss and Tito Sabatelli breaking up. I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat here, ladies and gentlemen. I think Cooper Cappy actually has his mic working or has Skype working, so we're gonna give it a quick test run. Uh, I'm gonna patch him in here, see if it works. Uh, Cooper Cappy. Are you live? Holy fuck. Oh, he's live and just in time because oh, I'm talking about his favorite God. tag team on NXT. Hang on. <laughs> Skype makes the list for the entire fucking year. Okay? I am done with the Skype shit. I had to download a Skype version uh, like 7.5. Thank you to Tiff for telling me yeah, what version that, to download. Tiffany. My lord, what the <laughs> hell is the point of having a new Skype if it's not going to work? Yeah, Skype, you fail. You, you you make the list forever for that. I agree with Corporate Cappy here. Oh, That's pretty boy. bad. That's pretty bad. Um, but we got him in, and it, literally just in time, because I just, I just uh, stopped talking about your boys, uh, Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss, uh, teasing oh. a breakup this week. Uh, how do you feel know. about I, that? I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm happy that Tito gets the fuck away from Riddick Moss, but... To me, like, this didn't stem from anywhere. Like, this is the first time, like, we've seen anything like this. And then all of a sudden they break up after, like, one time. Like, I feel like it should have went on for a couple weeks and then, yeah. like, Riddick Moss walked out. Like, I feel like it all happened in one match and then that was it. Yeah. It, it, it definitely was sudden. Like, it was just, like, right in the middle of the match, like, there was, like, a... Tito had a point where he was getting pissed off because Riddick Moss doesn't do anything and... To be honest, he doesn't do anything. Like, what does Riddick Moss actually do for that tag team? He's not. He's not wrong to be mad here. So, um, but then he had uh, Riddick Moss slap the shit out of Tito's chest as a, a retag in. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens out of this. It's weird how they just all of a sudden. There's no reason why they're breaking up. Maybe we'll get like. A, I think we're gonna get a reasoning. NXT is not one of those brands that just leaves you in the dark and you don't know shit. So I think we're going to get a reasoning. I bet you it's a pretty good reason too. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe they realize that Riddick Moss is a bum, and they're like, <laughs> "We need to get Tito away from this guy, or else, you know, he's, he's going to be terrible." The guy got great heat this week. Travis can Tito suck, sucks, man. Like the guy can be a good heel. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I just don't understand why it all happened in literally one match. And then we had a backstage fallout thing, and the interviewer asked Tito if. Uh, what he's doing and he said I don't know I'm gonna go find my tag team and he stopped in the middle of tag team he said I'm gonna go find Riddick Moss so so could this be maybe a tease that Tito's got a new partner on the way maybe maybe there's someone in the performance center that's uh looks like he'd be a better partner for Riddick or for uh Tito Sabatelli and this is a way to push Riddick Moss out of the picture I hope so because that would make a lot of sense because he needs a better tag team partner that actually you know kind of looks like he's serviceable. Yeah, because we can tell. We, we say it on a weekly basis when these two come out. Riddick Moss just looks way out of place with Tito yeah. Sabatelli. The way Tito is and his gimmick and the whole, like, you know, being rich. And just, Riddick Moss looks like a bum. He does. Yeah, he, and, like, y- you think about Street Profits. Like, yeah, Angelo Dawkins is clearly the second best, but he fits in. He still fits in with um, Montez Ford. Yes. So, like, they play off each other well. Riddick Moss literally does nothing for Tino Sabatelli. Like, they, they don't seem to have that type of chemistry mm-hmm. like like Angelo Dawkins and uh, Montez Ford have. Right. So maybe they realize that, you know, maybe this is not the right pairing. <laughs> Cuban Girls saying EC3. I could see EC3 and uh, Tito being a team, man. Yes. I could see that. That'd be dope. I'd be dope. I'd, I'd be all for that. I, I actually give props to your boy Tito if that ever happened. Yes. Um, 
but I just, I still have to stick with my boy Street Profits and Undisputed Era, baby. What about heavy machinery picking uh, up the win? Yeah, I mean it, it gets payback for the the dirty win that uh, Tito picked up on them last time you guys faced. So, and you had the ref obviously catching you know Tito trying to cheat again. So, you know, it was a good rematch. I, don't know, I, I didn't mind it. Yeah. It's one it of those, was good. Uh, Tucker Knight with that senton off the, yeah, the ring apron. Very very tough spot to take, especially if you're the guy on the receiving end of that. Holy for shit, man! <laughs> giant dude like that, be doing a senton, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I'm interested to see where heavy machinery. Everyone's like, oh, they're gonna face war machine, so we'll see if that happens. We'll see. Oh. A surprise entrant in that tournament. Yeah, the Dusty Rhodes Classic Tournament which is returning because you know you can't go on Twitter without seeing spoilers anymore. So one of these tapings, we're gonna reintroduce the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Um, so after this, we moved on. We had a Johnny Gargano in ring segment. Uh, the crowd very, very heavy chanting Johnny Wrestling here, man. They're very, very behind Johnny Gargano, and I want to go back to something you told you you're saying over the uh while we were watching NXT last night that Johnny Gargano could literally be the next Daniel Bryan. He's that over, and I think that you're right in this case, <laughs> to be honest. Um. Well, I mean, you look at his size and what he's able to do in the ring, and the way the crowd gets behind him. Like, it's just like, I haven't seen anything like that from a guy like him since Daniel Bryan. Seriously. So, <laughs> and they and they always make the comparison, too. And, I mean, Johnny Wrestling, he's just a guy, people gravitate to him. He's just, like, you, you can't not love the guy. Like, he just, he busts his ass. He, he does the best at any, everything that gets put in front of him. He's good in the ring, good on the mic. He's got a good character. Mm-hmm. Like, the guy's just got the whole package, even though he's only a smaller guy like Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan. And I agree with a lot of people that say that like, this guy is in the category of an AJ Styles, a Finn Balor. He's up there, but he, I know he's on NXT. But I hope that when he does make the transition to the main roster, they, they do see something like that and they do push him in that sense. I know that the main roster doesn't really push those stars anyways. Like I know AJ Styles is the top guy in the company. I hope they can see that and Johnny Gargano can be one of those top guys and he can get – I think he's going to be that over. I can see when Gargano finally makes his way – to the main roster, he's going to be very, very, very over. It's going to it's going to be overwhelming, like the Yes movement was. I guarantee it. So, and I'm I'm liking that they're they're make the NXT is making sure that happens with this build that Johnny Gargano has been in the last half a year, and in now with the Chompa build, this is going to surpass him into that spot. Like it's going to be crazy. I cannot wait for Johnny Gargano in the future. So. As for Gargano with NXT, he came out tonight or last night talking about uh, the month he's had this past month, and it's been one of the greatest months of his career. Going into NXT TakeOver, really confident. He says, uh, but coming out to this reaction and earning respect of the fans is worth more than the championship itself. So Gargano really uh, pushing uh, the respect of the fans factor here, really getting more people on his side, and I think this is a good job of him doing that. He talks about Tommaso Ciampa and what Ciampa did to him with the uh, crutch to the back and that he's coming for him. And Ciampa, I'm coming for you. And then uh, as he's saying that, uh, Andre de Cien Almas comes out with uh, Selena Vega. Mm. Oh, Selena my Vega looking God. fine as always. Uh, Vega saying Johnny didn't deserve anything and shouldn't even be out here right now. Vega talks about uh, all the times that Almas has beaten Johnny Gargano and that uh, he's not Johnny Wrestling but Johnny a loser. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, she, it was kind of funny because she was talking about you earn the respect. Who cares? That doesn't yeah. mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good way to play Heat. It was it was it was yeah. awesome. I loved it. Um, Johnny then says uh, his second favorite part, like he says, the first favorite part was uh, the fans and earning the respect, but his second favorite part was when uh, Candice jumped the guardrail and beat the shit out of <laughs> Selena Vega. <laughs> The crowd was chanting uh, Candice wrestling at this point, so it played in uh, what Johnny says next. And then uh, Candice LeRae actually comes out here, and Gargano and her hair uh, fight off Almas and Vega out of the ring. Vega gets up on the stage and say, and gets all pissy and pissed off and starts screaming, what's it going to take to get rid of you, Johnny? We, you're, like a, you're like a poison. We can't get rid of you. So Johnny says, you want to get rid of me? I want a shot at that again. And if I can't win... And beat and beat you for that, then I'll leave NXT. So Johnny Gargano saying Crazy that I want another shot at this title, but if he loses, 
He must leave NXT for good. Wow. Oh, so we got another Dolph Ziggler uh, putting his career on the line to win the IC title stipulation here. But I could actually see I, – I knew there was no way Ziggler was losing that match. But mm-hmm. this match, like, I'm like – Gargano could lose this match. Mm-hmm. And, like, then what happens? Does he I get just... called up to 205 Live after – Triple H is revitalizing the division, it looks like, or you know what I can see? Go away for a while. You know what I can see? I think Chopping and Gargano is going to happen regardless. This match is, is it's in the making, it needs to happen. I have this prediction, and it's because I saw someone write it down on Twitter, and I'm like, okay, that is actually a really good idea. So it was their theory. They, they think that if Gargano loses this match, that Gargano is still going to hang around and like Chomp is going to come out and, and run a promo saying that, oh, Johnny Gargano is gone, blah, blah, blah. And then Jar- Johnny Gargano is going to come out of the crowd and attack Chompa. And it's going to lead to them getting booked in a non-sanctioned match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans. So a non-sanctioned meet. Sanctioned match. Yeah, meaning that Gargano doesn't need to be under contract by, by NXT to have this unsanctioned match. And I think it's just going to be an all-out brutal, no rules, anything goes match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans between Gargano and Ciampa. And I think maybe they'll book it, maybe if Ciampa wins, or if Gargano wins that match, he gets reinstated into NXT again. Whatever happens in this match, it's just, it, it, I feel like it's going to put Gargano over that much more as an underdog. Yeah. I, I can't wait, man. This it, it's <laughs> NXT is... It's we're not even like getting the full card yet, and NXT Takeover New Orleans has already beaten out half of whatever WrestleMania is going to put out there. To be honest, like putting t- the potential Taker and Cena aside, putting Styles Nakamura aside, and putting and whatever else aside, um, Takeover New Orleans is going to beat out half the card. Plain and simple, because I don't think Daniel Bryan's going to wrestle at WrestleMania after what we've seen today. And I forgot to mention that in the earlier in the show, Daniel Bryan has now been pulled from Access. So that is my guess, saying that he's not actually going to wrestle at WrestleMania. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't know if it's actually a tease that they're going to take him out and then surprise us at WrestleMania. I don't think he's going to be at WrestleMania. I get this big, big feeling that he's not after seeing that. Well, so. the, well, it's interesting because what happens with the SmackDown storyline? Right. I don't know. That's right. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think Kane is just going to end up. Kevin Owens is going to face Sami Zayn one on one at WrestleMania. And it's going to be like a pre-show match. It'll be like the third pre-show match somewhere they can stick out of the way. I just I can't. I I don't, I don't understand why they would what's just pull the him point? out of, but, out of I mean, access. What's the point of doing like this like three or four month long feud between the Dana Bryan, Shane, Sami, and KO if it's not going to go anywhere at WrestleMania? You know. I know. I just got this gut feeling, man. The main roster doesn't do anything right, so I don't give them credit, or I'm not hopeful for anything on the main roster. I'm not getting my hopes up. I can't. I've I've done it way too much to get my hopes up anymore. I can't do it. So, anyways, back to NXT. We are backstage after the whole Gargano thing, and uh, Shayna Baszler is backstage. Um, she talks about what she's done to everyone since she's made her debut at NXT, aka Dakota Kai, Kari Zane, and Ember Moon. Uh, and she brings out this uh, this this quote, and I'm like, okay, I, I like the quote. You liked it; it made her look badass. She says, "You either when you get in the ring with me, you either tap, nap, or snap." <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know that's gonna be a T-shirt. Oh yeah, tap, nap, or snap. It's gonna be a T-shirt. Um, and she says that Ember is scared again to get into the ring with her. And if she ever gets in the ring with Shayna again, she won't ever be in a ring ever again after that. Oh, man, so, like she makes you like when she talks, she's like Samoa Joe. You listen and like mm-hmm. you believe what she's saying. Right, right. She's believable. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's nuts, man. It's I can't believe how good she's becoming because I thought her transition wouldn't be that great. But. They're doing a, a very, very good job with the transition of Shayna Baszler into the NXT Women's Division. They're making her into that badass that they needed to do. Like we said before, they, she needs to be built as that Samoa Joe of the Women's Division. So I think they're doing a really, really good job with that. And, and again, again, it's not like where we feel like Ronda Rousey is going to be pushed and booked terribly. Mm-hmm. Like Shayna Baszler has lost a few matches. 
So, like, mm-hmm. I feel like the way Shayna Baszler is going to be booked is going to be a lot better than the way Ronda Rousey is going to get booked on the main roster. Oh, for sure. And as I read today, speaking of that, I've read today that Ronda Rousey has only been signed with the WWE to put Stephanie over in mainstream media. Who You're not going to... Again, again, what is Ronda going to do for... for yeah, Stephanie. everything for Steph. As we <laughs> said before in this fucking podcast, they do everything for Roman, and on the woman's side, they do everything for Steph. Who's not even a wrestler. Vince McMahon's two golden childs. Shane's not even part of the factor anymore. <laughs> No, he's got Roman, his adopted son. Yeah, unbelievable. Anyways, uh, after this, we had a Tyler Bate backstage interview, uh, getting interviewed about his losing, uh, losing his uh, UK title shot to Roderick Tyler Strong. Bate. Tyler Bate uh, says good luck. He says good luck to Roderick Strong, uh, and he says he looks forward to having more matches of the year with people like Aleister Black, Johnny Gargano, or Velveteen Dream. So oh, I would love to see him face amazing. any one of those three. <laughs> Oh, or on Fatal 4-Way. I don't care. Can you imagine, uh, like, on the main roster, you'd be like, yeah, I want to face uh, Kane, Jinder Mahal, and mm, Sin Cara. Yeah, or Kurt Hawkins, or, you know, uh, yeah. Heath Slater. But, like, God, those matches that he listed, like, I would have, I would like to see any of those four matches. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved it. I loved this, that he said something. He just ended the interview like that. I'm like, okay. Fair enough. Maybe he's not going to 205 Live. Good enough. Uh, next, we had uh, Bel- Bianca Belair have a match on uh, NXT, and she she faced, um, if I'm getting the name right, Jessix Hill. Yeah, something uh, like that. Who looked she very looked- old. <laughs> she looked like she came from, like, the we woods got, somewhere. She we got mother, very- mother Time here in the ring facing <laughs> Bianca Belair for whatever reason. So we had the youngest jobber in the world on uh, Raw, apparently. I don't know if you've seen Cappy. Apparently, the chick that faced Nia Jax, the jobber, on Raw this week is not even old enough to vote yet. She's like 17, right? Yeah. Wow. I don't even know is that how even that's... allowed? I don't know. Is that a lot? I don't... Apparently, she lied about her age, too. So, I have a feeling that this is like one of those... Uh, if you remember, if you guys, you, you history nuts up out there, ECW, there was a wrestler, if I can get the name right, something Jack... But he lied about his age. He lied about his information. He actually got hurt, and ECW. And he tried to sue ECW after that. So uh, there's a big lawsuit with that. Um, anyways, this was dangerous. This could have been a lawsuit here. So, so we had the youngest jobber ever, and we had transition to NXT. We have the oldest jobber in the books because I look. I took the first look at her, and I'm like, "There's no way this girl's wrestling at this age. What is she? 55? Like, it looks like she's pushing 60." I don't know what the fuck this was, but ended up being I, I I I would hope they would have the quickest match ever because I don't know how long she'd last in the ring, but it literally lasted a minute. This was shorter than the Goldberg Brock Lesnar match. <laughs> and Bianca, Bianca Belair didn't even have to use her hair whip. This yeah, match was like- you know this was a quick match when Bianca Belair of all people did not use the main thing she's known for in this match. It literally lasted under one minute. I, I I have to go look at the time. I kid you not, it was anywhere between fifty three and fifty five se- or fifty six seconds, one in between there, guarantee. So quickest match against Jessix Hill, we'll probably never ever see again in a WWE ring, and that's it. Interesting. I don't know showcase, I guess, because they're really high on Bianca Belair apparently according to reports. So, I mean, I am too. I happens. just I don't know if she's ready for a title shot yet, but I think she's definitely going to be groomed into that. And do like a next top heel of NXT, maybe underneath Shayna Baszler. Yeah, and like we said before, she's got that she's got that Sasha vibe. She's got that presence, so maybe she can be like maybe that next boss character of NXT, but not maybe like the same, but you know the same kind of direction. Like she's that you know push that way. Um, yeah, I like it. I, I love I love what she's about. I'm I'm with the officials, man. I'm really high on her too. So we'll see what happens with Bianca Belair. Uh, we had a Kari Zayn vignette after highlighting her Mae Young Classic win. This was all done because of her return at the Royal Rumble, which is a showcase too that her Royal Rumble performance and how good she did in it. So this was basically a vignette because she is coming back from injury. So thank God for Kari Zayn for being all healed up and coming back to the NXT Women's Division. Yeah, we got a champion with one arm. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Everyone else hiding note. because Shannon Baszler's there. <laughs> and yeah, another quick note that I saw couple of minutes for the podcast um 
Serena Deeb is now a trainer in the Performance Center for the women. Yes, so. yes, good for her. I had seen Bailey Serena, tweet at her too. The Straight Edge Society, and I think she was in the Cruiserweight Classic. So, Mayo Classic, veteran leadership there, or uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Mayo Classic, same fucking thing. Uh, but yeah, so, so that'll bring a lot to the to the women at the Performance Center. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. I guess Ember Moon tweeted about possibly defending her title against Baszler next week. I don't know how accurate that is. We'll have to see what happens that. And then we moved on to the main event. And we had uh, Sanity versus Undisputed Era. They are supposed to have a match earlier in the show for the tag titles. But because of what happened, Regal booked a six or three-on-three Tornado tag team match. But not for the titles, which we thought it was. But uh, anyways, Tornado tag team match. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. And I mentioned it before we patched you in, Cappy. Someone actually tweeted me on Twitter and said that the only one he could remember last was the Shield versus Evolution, the newly reformed one. Yeah, and I guess Tornado Tag is uh, no DQ or no count outs. Yeah, I guess shit. so. It's just like it was free weird. for all. One of those other like gray area rules too. Um, but Eric Young, I want to say, looks very weird with a shaved head. He looks does, more like he, he runs a deranged hobo gang. Does not look like the same Eric Young we know with the with the messed up mohawk he just does not look <laughs> like eric young it looks like a literally a, impo- a, f- a fat older imposter of eric young i don't know what the hell is going on with him right now but maybe it's just to show how crazy and show a little more craziness out of him i don't know it is what it is but uh undisputed era coming out looking more serious than the usual you usually have like kyle riley playing the guitar but they're coming out more serious this time because of the brawl that happened in the beginning of the show but again, the, they just the sanity is just nuts, man. They go right at Undisputed Era. They didn't even let them get in the ring. Just fucking jumped right out of the ring and fought them on the outside to start the match. Um, but this is a crazy, so much action in this match. It's so it's so hard to review this match because so much shit went down in this match, like so I missed, much like, stuff. First, I missed like the first five minutes of the match, and I came back and. There was just like people all over the place. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, people fighting so, into the into the crowd. Yeah, it was in the in the tunnel area. I'm like, so Holy lots shit. of back and forth action. Weapons got brought out, chairs, tables, all the shebang. The fight ended up going back to the backstage at one point because they had tornado rules. Everyone's legal. There's no tagins, so they're they're going backstage while the two people were on the outside. They make their way back into the ring at one point and uh, they're fighting up on the stage. Bobby Fish and Killian Dane. And Killian Dane throws Bobby Fish over the stage onto everyone that's standing on the outside. <laughs> this is the only time you're going to see a bear throw a fish, ladies and gentlemen. Throw away a fish. <laughs> yeah, throw away one without eating it. Yeah. Uh, just crazy action. One by um, one, everyone's laid out at one point, too. Just, just nuts. What just about where stuff. Killian Dane tries to do the, um, the, oh my god, what's it? The Mishinoka driver? No, he he does he he does the drop kick and also like oh the, and the sent on at the same time the sent on yeah yep. on <laughs> that's top of, nuts it was kind of botched because it was Bobby Fish's fault he didn't run quick enough but yeah. Killian Dane like he's doing like these double moves man like the guy can move for somebody his size like he is he's is incredible athlete for yeah, somebody does, his size he does the Mishinoku driver and Rikishi splash at like the same time. Yeah, and then like he the did that, uh, and then he tried doing the the rolling senton and put himself through the table. Yeah, <laughs> Adam Cole jumps out of the way and he just he does like a slow senton onto the table. Like it was very lackluster, but you know it still hurts. Yeah. He's still going through. And the, the table. last thing I want to say is when Eric Young takes like any like a super kick or something, he like starts like convulsing. Like on, yeah, on the <laughs> he's like through. he's like twitching. He does like the best sell of a super kick I've ever seen. Um, at one point, Undisputed Era is like doing a three on one attack on Eric Wolf. Eric Wolf or Eric Wolf? Is it Eric Wolf? No, I'm no, doing Eric Young. Alexander Alex Wolf. Alexander Wolf. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyways, Wolf is fighting him off, and Adam Cole actually super kicks him in the face. Eric Young tries to come in with a kendo stick, beating people up, and then he gets super kicked, and then that's where he starts convulging. Uh, Young then even kicks out of the one of eight finishers Adam Cole has. I don't know which one this was, uh, but Dane gets back in the ring and he beats up on all three of these guys, and then he hits his finisher on Bobby Fish for the win. So they really made Killian Dane look strong here, and I think they did that on purpose because of uh, the future plans of him and maybe Lars Sullivan. I don't know what the hell is going on with Lars Sullivan. We read reports this week that uh, he might have an injury and he, his health issues are out of the way. And there's there's a lot of other reports saying that, that uh, something else is happening with Lars Sullivan. Who knows what's going on? But I like that they made Killian Dane look very strong here and him to get the win up on for uh, Sanity in this case. 
Hundred percent, and I was like, I popped it for something. Wait, what? Sanity just won the tag titles bag, and then I realized it wasn't for the tag yeah. titles. <laughs> so it made sense for Sanity to come out on top here. And Killian Dane, you know, he is the beast of the group. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not shocked that he wasted yeah. all three guys. And man, just NXT put on another good show. Like this show was so good. Like, every week, I don't think like we. There's some weeks, yes, we have our critiques for NXT, and we have some disappointments, but. There was literally no disappointment with this show. I I didn't have any disappointment or anything wrong with this show. Again, it just yeah. keep it keeps you entertained and it keeps you wanting to come back for more. And they hype up what happens next, what's coming up next week. Like they do it every week, and this is great. Yeah. Like this week, they hype up that Al- Alistair Black is going back in in ring performance uh, next week. Everyone wants to know what's next for Alistair Black. Excuse me. And maybe by doing it only an hour show, maybe that helps. To you know, <laughs> excuse me. <what? laughs> Um, by the one hour show, you don't have to like, you know, rush things and put filler in for two hour shows. Like you get mm-hmm. done what needs to get done. You plan for the next week and there's no filler crap. Usually. Mm-hmm. I don't know where Nikki Cross was. Uh, Cuba girl puts in the chat. Not sure what she, I, I was expecting her to come out with sanity the second time, but I don't know what's going on with that. Um, anyways, yeah. NXT always the a show in our highs. Always the a show. Uh, mm, debatable. I don't know. It's not debatable. Don't even <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> Raw's Raw SmackDown main roster booking and overproduced crap nonsense is just absolutely garbage. Like this week with SmackDown, they had the stupid like they said it's a suplex right across the screen when when Chad Gable did a suplex. I'm like, is this really necessary? Like, do we really need to have over? I was so glad that the Usos didn't get any like screen graphic shit this week. They're able to cut their promo, and let me just say, the Usos are probably the best thing going right now in the main roster. Best tag team I've ever seen. The guys can cut promos; they feel real. It's just they go out there and be themselves. They don't sound like scripted robots. They just they know what to say. They don't they don't stutter. They're just the perfect tag team. I love the Usos, man. They're the main thing why SmackDown is is keeping up uh, on the main roster. I'm not gonna lie. That and AJ Styles, day, obviously. Day one is H for sure. Yeah, day one is H is for sure. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, that is NXT. Another good week this week. Can't wait for next week and the build up more for NXT Takeover New Orleans. Um, we'll get into. Oh, you got something to say? Nope. Nope. Okay. So <laughs> we'll get into that part of the show, and that is the list of ten. Ten. You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list! That's right. Welcome to the list of 10. That part of the show where myself and Cobra Cappy have our Superstar of the Week or Moment of the Week that gets a perfect 10 rating or makes the list. And we'll start off, as always, with Cobra Cappy. <laughs> The pointless fucking women's match that was announced for uh, the Elimination Chamber between Asuka and Nia Jax. There is so much booking holes with this crap that, like, I don't even know where to start with this. Okay? You have – what is the point of having the women's Royal Rumble match? She's supposed to have a one-on-one championship match at WrestleMania. You have Nia, who has a chance to win it or to beat Asuka for her streak and then go on to WrestleMania to add it into the triple threat. Well, first of all – Asuka hasn't even picked which championship she's going after first, so how the hell do we even know if she's picking Alexa Bliss, or you've basically just given it away by doing that, even mm-hmm. though Asuka hasn't said it herself, or the fact that, you know, what the hell did Nia Jax do to deserve this match? And what the... What is not, wh- where did she come from? Wh- who gave her the number... What did she win a number one contenders? Man, no, she's been squashing jobbers. Oh, but I guess squashing jobbers automatically consists of you getting a number one contenders match. Oh, fuck, my bad. I I that's all you have if to do. They had a oh. match between like her and Bailey or her and Sasha or Triple Threat or something to like give her this opportunity. But why the fuck? So she just gets to bypass the elimination chamber. Yeah, but no, Sasha, Oscar, Sasha Banks got to break her neck almost against Oscar uh, and doesn't even get an instant title shot. I mean, she'll probably be in the chamber, but she doesn't get put in that match. You know what I mean? It's just like she doesn't yeah, get a rematch like, against Oscar to prove herself that she can probably beat the streak. 
that's that would have made more sense because her and Oscar yeah. had a really good match and Sasha came close to beating her. So Sasha maybe says, okay, well I want another opportunity, and maybe Kurt Angle says it was such a good match. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to get into the triple threat. But what the fuck does has Nia done in the last two months to deserve to face Oscar one on one for that? That type of stipulation. Yeah. Don't what just give us random matches. That this is why it don't make, don't make sense about the main roster. They give us random matches that make no sense just to put people on TV. You don't have to do that. NXT doesn't do that. When they don't have something for someone, they don't put them on TV. <laughs> or why is Nia just not in the elimination chamber? Why exactly. would she not be in it? It just makes no sense to me. So, for the whole like logic and booking gaps throughout this whole crap that was going on to make the women's Royal rumble look like shit by adding this stipulation to this match handing nia Jax a title f- shot at possibly for whatever reason this you know what you just made the list that and the pit of skypes <laughs> yeah sure but i there were so many logic logic holes with this thing it just mm-hmm. i couldn't even comprehend how bad this was booked mm-hmm. well my first moment of the week. It is a list moment, shockingly. No Kane on TV uh, this week, so I'm interested to see what it's going to be. <laughs> My, just because of what we got out of the announcement today is literally why I'm giving a list moment. Why have a fucking, why make a big deal about the SmackDown ta- ta- top 10 nonsense if you're not actually going to fall through with it? Literally a day after, a fucking day after you announced it, you make no sense of it. A day. It didn't even last a day. You had Shane McMahon fucking come out and say that for whatever reason, Dolph Ziggler and Barrett Corbin get to face each other, and the winner gets added to the WWE title match? Are you... Why? Why is this the week of people getting random opportunities? For no reason. You have Nia Jax getting an opportunity for no reason. Now you got Baron Corbin and Dolph... That's like the worst match to make for an opportunity. Ziggler against Corbin. That is snooze fest central. What Who the, the fuck cares about that match? Why they're not in the top ten? Did I see Baron Corbin's name? Absolutely fucking not. Did I see Dolph Ziggler's name? No. Dolph Ziggler came back at the Royal Rumble. Then he wasn't even on the same week on SmackDown. But no, he gets an instant title match, right? Oh, because we got to keep him happy because of his contract expiring. We don't want him to go anywhere else. Fucking let him walk. He doesn't need to be with the company. You're not gonna push him. He doesn't want to be here. Let him walk. Don't just give him fucking false hope. And you put our boy Ty Dillinger at number 10, pun intended. You put him at number 10, but you don't give him a WWE title shot? How does that make sense? Or even Rusev Day. Rusev Day was nowhere in the top 10, and he's the most over-fucking thing on your television show. But no, he doesn't deserve to be in the top 10 either, right? That's yeah, why this whole... Different Baron Corbin. So did this whole new SmackDown top 10 thing that I actually liked and had potential for it and they ruined less than 24 hours after announcing it it makes you know what you just made the list unbelievable like, we haven't uh, heard anything from Dolph Ziggler like how did he instantly get put into the did he did he face Sin Cara in a dark match to get put over <laughs> he must have because you gotta you gotta beat Sin Cara maybe maybe he did maybe they both beat Sin Cara at a live event now they, they're getting title <laughs> opportunities <laughs> That must have been the only option. No, anyway, that was just it's garbage. It's already lost its meeting in less than 24 hours. So I don't give a fuck about the top 10 anymore. Going forward, I don't care. I do not care. They're going to come out and people are going to tweet about it and say, oh my God, this guy's moved up the top 10 list. Who cares? They might as well fucking put it in the website again and call it power rankings where no one fucking goes to the website and look at. WWE has a website. Useless. <laughs> Useless. Uh, I 100% agree with that. Made... Oh, terrible. So, uh, another list moment this week goes to Jinder Mahal not being on television. Wow. I'm joking. That is not my other list moment. I was I was prepared to be serious there. I was just going to let you talk. Nope. But seriously, where was Jinder this week, man? He made that amazing tweet at Rob Gronkowski over the Super Bowl thing. Yeah, that's not going to get you pushed. And then he's not even on TV. Where is this guy? He doesn't need to be on TV. What do they have for him? Oh, I mean, he's got to go after his, his rematch for the WWE title. Like, you know. No, no. Okay. He didn't win the Royal Rumble. He can he can screw off for the rest of the year. <laughs> Don't hinder Jinder, man. I'm telling you. I'm hindering. He'll win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Calling yeah, right now. No. That's going to be your boy Paul White 
guarantee with this yeah. drastic body formation change, and they're gonna be oh, we should give him the Andre John Moore out Royal. Oh, well, it looks good. Uh, As a Mr. Beat, maybe he's maybe he's getting his pimples popped. <laughs> Getting a new cycle of steroids, and he's got to get off for a couple months. No, he's got to go on a new diet. All right, yeah, new cycle. Anyway, got it. <laughs> anyways, let's not you know bash gender on this show. I thought this was uh, the point of the show. Where I'm going to go into my ten moment this week, and it is going to uh, 205 Live being revitalized. Mm-hmm. The last two weeks of this brand have been great between. Uh, Drake Maverick, aka Rockstar Spud, being the new 205 Live GM, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. I, I really like his charisma, guy. man. I like it. Yeah, I, I really like how he's what he's bringing to the division. They needed some kind of direction. Like they've just been like lost puppies for the last year and a half. And yeah. now that the I kind of like what he said this week to Tony Nese and Drew Gulak. He said, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a jab at Enzo in a way. He's like the train has left. That train is gone. <laughs> It's a new, it's a new train. Tony, stop counting your abs, and Drew, stop doing your PowerPoint presentations. Get out there and fight. So then he booked those two next week. So it seems like he's they're really trying to bring the wrestling back. And what we heard this week about Triple H now taking the reins of 205 Live. I mean, it's yeah. night and day. You can already see it in two weeks. The difference of this division and what they're doing with the tournament, and what they're just the whole outlook of the show has changed dramatic. It's like a reset yeah. of the show. For yeah. these last two weeks from you know because these guys have so much potential but they just for the last year and a half they were vince wanted to bring them in a different direction and the whole enzo crap happened yeah. so for the net 205 live turning a new page and it really looks like that this division is going to be going places in the next year it gets a perfect <laughs> that's right and we might have to start watching it again because it yeah. seems like it's going into that direction and with all so. the guys that Triple H is bringing in, like we saw Hideo Tommy, Roderick Strong, maybe Johnny Gargano eventually, yeah. Tyler Mark Bates. Andrews next week, like huge, man. If you guys don't remember Mark Andrews from the UK tournament, go back and watch him, and you're going to wonder why I'm so excited about Mark Andrews being there. <laughs> the uh, guy is it, unreal. I kind of laughed at what you said the other day about Triple H running it now. You are kind of you were saying that maybe he's going to – that's going to be his scapegoat from keeping Vince from burying guys from the main roster. Yeah. By all, much- all all his little guys on NXT except for the big ones, he's going to use 205 Live to hide from Vince. Like, all right, Vince, I'll give you uh, AOP, Lars Sullivan, and uh, Heavy Machinery. And, uh, I'll take Adam Cole, Undisputed Era. We'll take Sanity and – uh, we'll take uh, all these little guys, and you can have everyone. All the big guys. There you go, Vince. Take them. All. There you go. I know you want Lars Sullivan, Vince. He's big. Yeah. Ugh. I know. Big sweaty but men. It just seems like the show has such a breath of fresh air. Like, and it, it, it's kind of like moving in like the form of NXT now. Like they're hyping mm-hmm. matches for next week. They're doing this tournament that's going to last a long time, and mm-hmm. it's going to end up with the person, the the match at Mania being for the Cruiserweight title. So like, mm-hmm. it's just it's got the NXT type feel now. The last yeah. two weeks, and I'm really loving it. Yeah. So, I have actually have a perfect ten moment. And that is going to, and it's a little obvious. It's a little lackluster, but it's. It's awesome because I'm I'm just because I'm becoming such a big fan of him and obviously because I'm wearing his T-shirt in the video version of this podcast. But it's to the whole Johnny Gargano storyline and how it's going forward now. They're they're already setting up the next steps already, man. There, there's no like couple week die down where we don't see him anymore. They're already setting it up for the next steps for Johnny Gargano and how they're pushing towards this ultimate payoff between Gar- Ciampa and Gargano, which is probably going to be the most intense, epic match of the year, not taking anything away from his Almas match. But they, now that they're adding this crazy stipulation that if he can't beat Almas for the title, he's got to leave NXT. And you had freaking Candice LeRae looking all worried, like, what the hell did you just do, Johnny? Like, you're, you're putting your career on the line. You're, you're, getting, you're, getting, you're letting this get to your head. I love the booking and the storyline. They're, they're, they're booking it's such a feel-good story. The way they're booking Johnny Gargano right now is perfect. It's too perfect, man. This guy is going to be huge. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, when this guy gets called up to the main roster, and I hope if they're going to do it, it'll, he'll show up on the Raw right after WrestleMania. If not, hold him off until Brooklyn. And the Raw after that, he's going to get probably the biggest pop ever. Like it's gonna be Daniel Bryan, yes level, guaranteed. Like they're gonna chant Johnny Gar- Johnny Wrestling for like twenty minutes straight. They won't stop. 
Jom Johnny freaking wrestling. Yeah, he pulls a Seth Rollins line this week. So just for the whole how they've booked Johnny Gargano so far and what they're doing with him in the future, it's getting my obvious perfect. Ten. Yep. It's got to. <laughs> I, I agree. The guy, you, you can't halt this guy's momentum. It's like what they were trying to do with Daniel Bryan. Like you can't hold this guy back. Like he's, mm. he's just he's too going good play, right now, bringing it places. Cuba girl, the Alexa Kurt Angle thing. I don't know. I oh. loved it from a storyline perspective, but the fact that she had to play the whole woman card yeah, thing that is so on the fence. I don't. I the promo was intense. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, ooh. I, I, I don't know. I'm very I don't I'm not very opinionated with that stuff and there's so many people that are on the fence about what she did. It's just like to me it's like I agree with both sides. <laughs> I'm 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 one with both sides. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she should have pulled the whole woman's card out and comparing herself to Brock Lesnar, but then uh, you you look at it from the other side, this is actually a very, very intense promo out of Alexa Bliss and it's something finally we're getting more out of her because literally she's been doing nothing for the last couple of months so I'm literally yeah, on the fence about this and that's why I'm okay with she should defend it she hasn't defended this since October so get your ass in the yeah. fucking ring yeah <laughs> I love you but get get your biscuit butt in the ring and defend the title <laughs> um uh, uh, I, I forgot what I was gonna say that's okay I think it was uh <laughs> I don't even remember now because I'm just thinking about Alexa and then my mind is just gone. Uh, in the gutter. <laughs> yep. Oh, wait. That's what it was. Okay. We also, uh, honorable mention to the Cricketville known as Des Moines, Iowa. And I'll give it to Kansas City too, guys. Both you guys this week. My God. Just no excitement for anything. Why did you even show up to the show? Why even go? <laughs> if you're going to go there and just sit in your seat like this. Oh, there's a superstar coming out. No, I'm going to still stay like this. The, oh. the thing they popped for the most was Randy Orton coming out with a random pointless RKO. On How many times have we fucking seen that over the years? Why is that more exciting that he's doing? Who cares? Who cares? What the fuck? Who cares? He's coming out doing RKO. Ooh. Oh, I haven't seen that before. Whoa, so new and, in and innovative. Oh, my God. I really, he... I really fuck Randy don't Orton. understand why people get so hype over the RKO. It's so I don't under, it's it's all the casuals. They were in Casualville the last two this two days. I knew we were gonna get something like this. It just to me I was sitting there going, Why fucking pay for a ticket if you're just gonna sit in your goddamn seat all night and watch the show? You could have done it at home. Get out of your seat, get off your ass, cheer, be loud. What the fuck are you doing? Why even go to a wrestling show? Yep, so Des Moines, Iowa and Little Rock, Arkansas have now been have, have now made the list twice, so they're uh, they're leading the way so far with uh, close behind are Green Bay, Wisconsin, Memphis, Tennessee, Los Angeles, California, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Charlotte, North Carolina, Lafayette, Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, and Kansas City, Missouri mm. are the are the list of cities on our list so far for oh. Cricketville. Glorious Greg joined the chat late. What's going on, Glorious Greg? And we we're just in time because we we're about to start our end of the show segment, and that is your fan tweets on there. Guys, you want to fan tweet us at a holds bar WP is where you can do that. Look for the tweet and you can send us your thoughts and questions about NXT every single week. You can tweet it during the show while it's happening, and then we'll read them on the air for you and answer the questions to the best of our abilities. So we will start off with Cubagirl125, who is our Twitter fan of the month for January. She puts what do you think they have planned for the iconic duo since they're off TV? I want them to have a feud with either Bianca Belair or Candice LeRae. Or maybe they need to need a third member of their group, possibly. Um, I think, well, they're being kept off TV because I read the report saying is they have nothing for them right now. Um, to me, it's just like, okay, if you have nothing for them, get them called up because literally... What else are you going to have them do? You have Shayna Baszler literally taking over this division. Unless you're going to include Peyton Royce into this, just have her get called up already. Because right now, if you're not going to do anything with her, you might as well call her up. Um, as for a side feud, maybe, I don't know. Peyton Royce, I can't really see Peyton Royce going up against anybody. Uh, she's the heel here, so maybe Kari Zane. Maybe a Kari Zane and Peyton Royce feud. Maybe something like that. We'll have to see. It's just like, is she staying? are they staying in NXT? Are they getting called up? Like, right. How can you not have any storyline for these for these two? I don't these, know how these they made, mind boggles me. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't include her in the Royal Rumble at all. Like it's just it's. I don't know what's going on, man. It sucks for like them they're, because they're, they're holding they're, back Peyton Royce because she's got a lot of talent. Yeah, and again, if they need, they need if they have nothing for her in NXT, get her called up because you can do so much with her on. SmackDown is in need of more women right now. 
Or so, two women that aren't doing anything, Nikki Cross and Peyton Royce. Why don't they have a feud? Or that. Yeah. Uh, her next question, do you think that Triple H can handle both NXT and 205 Live since he has now gotten the hold of 205 Live? What do you want from NXT to be in the tournament? For me, I would want to see Gargano or Fabian go at it with the cruiserweights. Um, as for the Triple H question, I think he can handle it because uh, NXT does all his tapings in one night for four weeks, so he's got to be there for that one night, and then he can go on the road with 205 Live and run that way. So I think he's more than uh, capable of doing that. I have full faith in Triple H to run 205 Live. We've seen what he's done the last two weeks, and it's already night and day difference. As for our other questions, who do you want to be in the from NXT in this uh, tournament for the Cruiserweight title? Uh, she puts that she would want Gargano or Fabian Eichner. Um, I would want to see, we already saw Tyler Bate, uh, maybe a, I'd love to see Pete Dunne, even though he's the UK champion. Uh, we already Leo saw Roddy Rush. Strong. Leo Rush, that was one person, maybe, uh, I don't think, uh, I think they're really high on Ricochet, so I don't think we're going to see him. Leo Rush, for sure. Uh, Fabian Eichner would be a good one. We saw him in the Cruiserweight Classic, maybe a Luis Mendoza. Um... Adam Cole would be sick if he wasn't in the in, in involved with the Undisputed Era thing. I don't know. It's tough. Maybe they bring back some Cruiserweight Classic people. But uh, Gargano, I think, is too soon. I think they're too tight in with the... If he wasn't tight in with the Ciampa thing, that'd be awesome. Or maybe he does go into it and maybe Ciampa screws him over. Who knows? Um, we'll have to see what happens. But uh, I, I, I think Triple H can I, handle it. I put Killian Dane in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just scared. It would be like freaking like... Uh, well, the... fuck, Goldust was on 205 Live for a couple <laughs> weeks. You know, might as well just throw that out the window. Uh... Um, but what was the, the, the first question? Uh, do you think Triple H can handle both NXT and 205 Live? Oh, for sure. That guy sleeps like three hours a night. That guy yeah. works nonstop. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure he has like a feed from mm -hmm. like his office to like the Performance Center and NXT. So the guy can just do it all. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not worried about him running two one-hour shows. Mm -hmm. I'm more worried about Vince running Raw and SmackDown. I don't want to get with, into that. Uh, with the Beaver <laughs> and uh, Michael P.S. Cringe over there, yeah. uh, you know, being his right hand men. Did someone say what? My lord, I couldn't think of two worse stooges to be helping running a show. Yeah. Uh, looks like, okay, so this is Michael Chow now. Michael Chow TV tweeting into the show. Uh, Michael Chow TV also has a wrestling podcast guys he's also on Spreaker go give him a follow on there we were definitely a big help for him getting his podcast off the ground and we uh, always love his work in reviewing Raw and Smackdown and reviewing pay-per-views uh, on his show so go give him a follow and check out his podcast as well uh, he puts looks like a possible Tino and Se Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss Festival of Friendship coming soon is this <laughs> Is this a good idea, or are they better as a tag team? And who do you want, or who do you see having better success as a solo wrestler, Tito or Riddick Moss? Is that even a fucking question? <laughs> do I even need to answer that? And speaking of Michael Chow, he just joined the chat. Oh, he had an eye appointment. Yeah, probably from watching. He had to go bleach his eyes out watching Ron SmackDown this week. But is it a good idea? Is this a good idea to, to split them up, or are they better as a tag team? You think? No, Tino is 100% needs a, either a better tag team partner or needs to be on his own. And I just, I like it, but I just don't like how it all took place on one episode. I would have liked it to see yeah. him spread it out over a couple weeks, a couple matches. To me, it maybe, always maybe we'll get that. Match. I'm guessing we're going to get something else. Maybe they have another tag team match next week and there's another fallout. And then eventually we're going to get the real reason why maybe it's Riddick Moss. He's, he maybe he's feeling like Tito is overshadowing him or maybe Tino feels that Riddick Moss is holding him back. I think we're going to get something out of this. But uh, <laughs> I do agree with you. Uh, who, would be who would be more successful as a solo wrestler? I'd have to say Tino all day. <laughs> 100%. Uh, unless they had a big gimmick change for Riddick Moss, which is highly doubtful, uh, Tino all day. The guy's been in NXT for like four years yeah, and hasn't done anything. Uh, he puts, if Johnny Gargano loses the match in his job, do you see them taking Gargano and Ciampa's feud to the main roster and having Johnny Gargano versus Ciampa at WrestleMania? That'd be insane. Uh, I think definitely the main... I don't think the main roster, though, casual central people... Don't know much enough about Gargano and Ciampa to do that, um, especially since I've seen a lot of reaction videos to the Royal Rumble and a lot. And when the NXT people came out, they're like, kind of like who? Like, 
get educated. Start watching that fucking NXT, man. Start watching other shows. Stop sticking to the main roster garbage. These fucking casuals, man. Literally piss me off. Anyways, um, I I think that if Gargano, like I said earlier in the show, if Gargano loses the match and loses his job, they're going to make it an unsanctioned match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, and it'll be under unsanctioned rules. So Gargano versus Ciampa, anything goes. Nothing's and there's everything's legal. Nothing's held back. That's just I, I'm thinking that's the direction they're going to, and that's my guess. So, um, and he puts lastly thoughts on Triple H getting full control two five live. Hashtag Hallelujah. Hashtag, hashtag Thank you, Paul. Hashtag Make two making two five live great again. Hundred percent agree. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what Triple H has more in store for 205 Live. Again, I always hope that they bring it back to full sale, but maybe not. It probably won't happen. Well, um, maybe the way Triple H books it, maybe the casuals can get excited about it. I hope so. it seemed like this week they were into it, and they were in you know crappy Des Moines, Iowa, and they still you know looked okay. Yeah. Um, but again, I just the whole feel of the show just just it just looks different now. Yeah. And maybe people can see maybe Vince would be like, "Wow, Triple H is doing really well. Maybe he should take over the whole company." Oh god, I really hope that tri- if only. And then maybe by that time XFL is like off and booming and Vince is like, "Oh, I'll just go to the XFL, you know, it's doing so well off the ground." That's why we we both hope XFL actually succeeds that way Vince, you know, eventually maybe sways away. A lot of people say he won't eventually sway away. But I think he will. And I'm telling you right now, Mojo Riley will be the first announced football player into the XFL. Guarantee. Sure. He's going to have Gronk train him. I guarantee it. Um, anyways, getting into the last tweets, and that comes from our 2017 Fan of the Year. That's right. It comes from Glorious Greg. He won our 2017 Fan of the Year. And if you guys out there want to win the 2018 Fan of the Year, all you have to do to be uh, picked for that is you interact with us in the live chat or on Twitter, and you're automatically entered in to win 2018 Fan of the Year. And you get your own theme song played before every one of your tweets, and a shout-out right here on the show. So shout out to you, Glorious Greg, for winning our 2017 Fan of the Year. And you're a gloriously picked theme song but read before, or played before all of your tweets so get right into glorious greg's tweets and he starts off with uh with 205 live being under control of triple h moving forward do you think he will move the cruiserweights to nxt along with 205 live Oof. uh i don't think they all be packed on one show but i do like the idea if they did it an hour after nxt or an after before and they actually did it from full sale, going back to my original idea. That's what I think they should do. So hopefully they do go in that direction eventually. Maybe if they give full, full control over 205 Live. I don't think he has complete control of 205 Live. I think maybe if they if they actually give him the full show, he will move it over down to uh, uh, full sale and just do tapings. Because I think that's easier. And that way you can feature the cruiserweights on Raw more and they don't have to travel from city to city from Monday Night Raw to SmackDown when you feature them on both shows. I think it's easier for them to travel and do some live events, some 205 Live live events. So I think it's an easier way to do it. So hopefully they do it that way. Um, he puts, uh, I wish Bailey was still in NXT. I would love to see her go up against Shayna Baszler. Oof. I, I'm a Bailey fan. I think she got her ass kicked, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no one bit. But if it was the Bay- NXT Bailey, I think there'd be a, a tough test there. I know she's she got pushed way worse on the main roster and she got pushed better on NXT, so maybe it'll be a test there. I don't know. Kind of see it. Mm, the way they've ruined Bailey to me, it seems like she has no shot. Yeah, but you have to admit like when she was pushed in NXT, she was better than what she's being pushed now. Way better. Uh, well, I mean, it can't get much worse than what it yeah. is now. And he also puts, the epic conclusion of Johnny Wrestling versus Almas rivalry is going to be glorious. If Johnny loses, he leaves NXT, but I know that he will win. So, Glorious Greg is very, very excited for the Almas and Johnny Gargano conclusion. I cannot wait for that either. 
I can see that being a very, very good match. Maybe not as good as their match at TakeOver Philly, but I can still see it being a really, really good match in uh, whatever the outcome. I, if it does mean Johnny Gargano losing, which is probably the most likely outcome, um, I think that it will be an unsanctioned match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans. So We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Sorry, you're, I, I, I'm messaging <laughs> in the chat here. I haven't yeah. really been paying attention. No, it was about uh, Glorious Greg being excited for Almas and Johnny Gargano. And how yeah, conclu- uh, uh, part four. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. And I don't and think with- that, I was saying that I don't think this match is going to be as good as their takeover match, but it's going to be exciting to see what's going to go down. And if uh, I think the more likelihood of him losing is probably going to happen and the unsanctioned match at takeover New Orleans. Yeah, and I think there might there <sighs> might be there <sighs> might end up being interference by Champa kind of ruining like a match, no? Yeah. He'll probably he'll probably screw over Johnny. I can guess him screwing yeah. over Johnny over this title match. Yeah, that that's probably where if I had to be bet on it, that probably that's probably what I would say would happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um that's it for the tweets, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your tweets, as always. We do appreciate it, and you guys want to tweet out there. Uh, to all the silent listeners out there, uh, no holds barred WP, make your voice heard, and we'll read them right out here on the podcast. It doesn't matter if it's a good opinion, bad opinion, good question, bad question. We'll read them all. We'll give you guys our honest answers. We don't make fun of people here on the podcast. We read them all and give you our honest thoughts on what you'd like to know on NXT, the A brand in our books. Yes, I think – I don't know if I'm getting sick, Tiffany. I don't know. I – just just been sneezing recently. I think it's my allergies. Uh, <laughs> this podcast room is also part of uh, one part of my basement where uh, we get the f- the the, f- the laundry all the laundry air. I don't know. I, I get really like congested when laundry starts happening down here. So um, I think it's just allergies. Yeah. I don't think I'm sick. <laughs> Kyle Kyle's been eating Tide Pods lately. So I will not answer that. I am. I do not eat Tide Pods. I'll put that. I'm telling oh, yeah. you right now, guys. I do not another eat Tide ten, Pods. Another ten moment this week goes to the guy in the crowd on Monday Night Raw that says Roman Reigns eats Tide Pods. Yeah, congrats. I give you an applaud for that. <laughs> that was probably the greatest sign of all time. Just saying. Or I think it was either Roman or Roman's fans eat Tide Pods. Either way, it was classic. Yeah, it was great. Um, but yes, thank you always for the tweets, guys. Again, like I said before, um. Big YouTube news. We're going to do a live sh- or We're going to do a live uh, 2K show called The Main Event. And it's basically a revamped main event show with, again, three main event matches per show. And it's going to be live on YouTube and do live commentary on YouTube for it. Um, so stay tuned for that when that's going to go down. Uh, i got a lot, a lot of episodes already booked and ready to go for these. So I'm really excited for this. And something I can actually do something with 2K because I've been literally trying to figure out what to do with 2K and something different that no one else does out there. So... I finally excited about this, so stay tuned for that. Um, as for headlines this weekend, maybe still in the works. I'd love to get another headlines out there to you guys, and we can talk some more about the news. I'm sure more news is going to come out from this week going into the end of the week. Um, besides that, guys, thank you to everyone in the chat. Tiffany from Dadass Podcast, guys, go give them a follow on Twitter. Follow Tiffany, follow James on Twitter as well. Michael Chow TV, awesome wrestling podcast as well, guys. Go check him out. He's also available on Spreaker. Um, and thank you to Glorious Greg, our Twitter fan of the year, and uh, Cuba Girl, our Twitter fan of the month. So thank you for interacting, guys, and uh, bearing with us as we went through a bit of a <laughs> trial and error thing with Skype in the beginning of the show with the connection issues, and now we're back on the air. So as for that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up. I don't think you, I have anything else to say. Do you have anything else to say, Corporate Cappy? Mm, besides Jason Jordan hopefully getting his heroic return at some point mm, nothing else to add sure because <laughs> he's the next generation of great man you gotta watch right. out well we're gonna end the show on this case now <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in to the Lowdown Show episode 89 we're very very close to episode 100 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred wrestling podcast your canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and nxt and no holds barred on anything we say pun intended you can follow the podcast on again on twitter and no holds barred at wp you can follow myself at corporate at real kyle masters and you can follow my co-host at corporate cappy you can follow us on instagram no holds barred wp if you want to listen to us on the go itunes stitcher radio and spreaker is where you can find us spreaker is a glorious 
podcast app that's available for all Apple and Android devices. It's free, and it's free to make an account. You can chat with us live on the air and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. You can watch any video versions of this podcast and 2K content and unboxings and unboxings and everything like that all on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. And you can hit that subscribe button. That bell icon is much appreciated for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm always joined on the Lowdown Show by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. And Stephanie McRan. And Stephanie McRan. And Shinsuke Nakamura, Yakamura. And Finn Baylor, as Tiff would love to say, Finn Baylor, and uh, all that stuff. All, all that stuff. I don't know what else he said. Jinder all, Mayhell. All, I'm sorry. And all of Kurt Angle's botched backstage things. Yes, yes. And guys, as always, we're reminding you to keep it on the lowdown.